Hello everyone, and welcome to my presentation titled Render Here, Render There, Render Everywhere, an introduction to rendering options for the web. My name is Thomas Desmond, and I am a developer advocate at Sitecore. Really quick, I just want to mention, again, I'm Thomas Desmond, and I encourage you to reach out with any feedback or questions on Twitter at Thomas J. Desmond. I'm on LinkedIn as well, and you can find more information about me as well on thetombomb.com. So let's jump right in. What are we going to talk about today? First off, I want to give you some important performance indicators that are going to come up throughout this talk as we're talking about our different rendering options. We're going to talk about what is rendering on the web. We'll do a comparison of all the rendering options as comparing them to the performance indicators in SEO, trying to see kind of how the user experience differs with the different rendering options. I'll share the site core offerings and how they relate. I'll share a little bit of some advanced rendering options as well. And at the end, a little bit of a no one size fits all just because there's so many different options out there. But let's jump right in and start looking at some performance indicators. So for the performance indicators, I've broken these up into two different categories, beginning indicators and ending indicators. The beginning indicators are things that generally happen in the early stages of our rendering process. So first off on the left is time to first byte. This is the time from between the user requesting the page and the browser getting its first byte of information from the server. This is important because a slow time to first byte means slow load times and possibly too much work is happening on the server, causing it to take a lot of time before it can actually respond to user requests. Our second indicator is first contentful paint. This is the time it takes for the first thing to get painted onto the screen. This is important because a blank page is discouraging to our visitor. If a user sees nothing, then they're not going to really understand that things are loading. If they're not seeing anything, they're thinking nothing is happening. So first contentful paint is important because it's important to get something loaded onto the screen. And next up, we have our ending indicators. Our ending indicators uh, are things that usually happen towards the end of the rendering process. So first up is largest contentful paint. This is the time it takes for the largest image or text block to become visible. And for me, I always originally thought that uh, this was the largest in terms of file size or kilobytes, megabyte size, but it's actually physical size because the idea is that the largest item on the screen is going to be the most important thing on the page and it's what the user came for. So it's the largest physical item, either text or images. So in the case of like my blog, I have a lot of posts on there. The text takes up most of the page. That's going to be my largest contentful paint. And time to interactive. This is our last performance indicator that we're going to bring up. And this is the time it takes for our page to become fully interactive. All the events wired up, everything ready to go. Users can interact with the page. This is extremely important because a page that looks loaded, but can't be interacted with is very upsetting to a user. It adds to a uh, uh, it makes that frozen feel, so it's really important to try and have a quick time interactive, especially when the page looks loaded, you want it to also be interactive. So these are some of the important performance indicators when it comes to rendering on the web. These are going to come out throughout the talk, so I wanted to talk about them and share with you the time to first byte, first contentful paint, largest contentful paint, as well as time to interactive. So what is rendering? Rendering on the web is the process of transforming website code into interactive pages that our users visit. It usually refers to the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code that we are rendering to the browser, rendering to the screen so that the user can have an interactive experience and have a web page that they want to see. So again, rendering is this process of transforming website code into interactive pages. And there's three big options that you can use for this. There's server-side rendering, client-side rendering, and static rendering or static site generation. So these three options are the big three options and what I really want to cover today in the presentation and compare and contrast them looking at the performance indicators and how the user experience differs with each. So let's jump right in. Our first rendering option is server-side rendering. And this is when we put the work of rendering on the server. So it's the server that's going to create the HTML page that then gets sent down to our user and visited by our site visitors. This is great because a server is generally more powerful than our user's machine. 
It's got a great CPU. It's got a fast internet connection that's really reliable. So servers are great at rendering HTML. They can do it quickly and they have that stable internet connection and fast CPU. Because in server-side rendering, we're relying on the server to call out to different APIs, databases, do any personalization. This is all happening on the server. So it's great to have a powerful machine. Another big plus of server-side rendering is that the server is going to be the one executing JavaScript. So there's very minimal JavaScript that's going to have to be sent down to the user's machine to be executed. And we care about this because this makes it great for search engine optimization or SEO. Web crawlers that try and crawl your pages for SEO from Google and Bing and other search engines are not great at executing JavaScript. Uh, Google's web crawlers, uh, they do say that they can execute JavaScript, but I've seen mixed results when actually working with it in a production environment. So it's really nice in server-side rendering to not have to rely on web crawlers executing a lot of JavaScript, as well as the user's browser not having to uh, execute a lot of JavaScript either. So looking at the big picture of this, the good for server-side rendering is the first contentful paint and time to interactive because the server is doing most, if not all of the work for the rendering process. As soon as it sends the HTML down to the user, that first contentful paint and time to interactive are almost the same number because as soon as it sees something on the screen, it is interactive. And again, it's great for SEO because we're not putting JavaScript execution on the user's machine. We're doing all of it in the server. Some bad pieces that come with server-side rendering could be time to first byte. If the server has a lot of execution that it needs to do, then it can have this blank page syndrome where the user is seeing a blank page or just really a loading screen for a long time before the server can send down that fully rendered page. So with server-side rendering, we're waiting for the server to complete everything and then send everything down. Looking at this in a diagram, on the left-hand side, our first step is the server receives our request. It then starts calling out to APIs, databases, looking at different personalization that can be done. And during this time, the user is still seeing the loading screen. Once everything's been rendered, that HTML is sent down to our user in step three. Potentially minimal JavaScripts being executed on the user's browser. So the page is visible, but not interactive. And then the last step, our page is fully interactive. Everything's wired up and the user is on their way. Between steps three and four is generally a very quick amount of time because there's minimal JavaScript that actually needs to be executed. For server-side rendering, the bulk of the work is happening there at step two, where it's calling out to different databases, APIs, and gathering all the data that it needs. Our next major rendering option is client-side rendering. In client-side rendering, we send minimal HTML down to the user's browser. So the HTML contains links to JavaScript bundles that need to be downloaded. And this is where the bulk of the work in client-side rendering is happening, is that downloading of JavaScript and then executing that as well. So we're putting all that work of rendering on the user's browser or the user's machine. On the right-hand side here is an actual uh, screenshot of HTML code that's sent down with a React application. This is a new React application. And you can see there's very minimal HTML that's being sent but there's those script tags that link you to JavaScript bundles that need to be downloaded. So this is really the entire HTML for your React application. And it's those JavaScript tags that are gonna be executed and really bring life to your application. So there's a lot of JavaScript that needs to be executed on the user's machine. This means low server cost because you have less work being done on a server, but it means that the user's machine, which might be an older machine, might be mobile, might not have a great internet connection, is having to do a lot of work on its end. What this means for client-side rendering is that time to first byte is going to be really great because there's that minimal HTML that needs to be sent down. It's highly flexible. We know who our users are. We can do personalization. We're able to uh, work with what the user, work with who the user is. and has those low server costs because we're not maintaining, upgrading, and having to maintain a server to handle every single one of our users' requests and do the rendering. We can just send down this minimal HTML down to users. Some of the bad pieces with client-side rendering are going to be that SEO because there's a lot of JavaScript that needs to be executed. Again, web crawlers are getting smarter, but depending on your level of JavaScript in your application, it might not see good SEO results. Your time to interactive can also be long, depending on how long it takes to download, execute, fully start running your JavaScript application. 
So that time to interactive can take quite a while, depending on how much JavaScript needs to be executed. So it really all comes down to your JavaScript performance uh, when you're looking at client side rendering. Seeing the diagram here, in our first step, the server responds with that minimal HTML. The user's browser is then downloading the JavaScript. That JavaScript is then executed. Your React application, your Angular application is started up and it then starts calling out to different APIs, then your databases doing personalization. And then step four, we have that interactive page ready for our user. So with client side rendering, we've pushed down all the work to step three, where the user's machine is then doing all the work of trying to collect data, can collect uh, different information to build and render out your page. Our last rendering option is static site generation, sometimes referred to as ahead of time rendering because in static site generation, we're building out static pages before anyone has even visited our site. So we're building out static content at build time, way before we even know who the user is, where they're coming from, or how they're getting there. So static site generation is great for static content. It's not very good for dynamic content. But because we have static content that's already been rendered before the user's even making their request, we're able to host that content on a low cost content delivery network or CDN. This CDN is able to handle requests as when a request comes in, it immediately sends down that static content that we've already generated back down to the user. So what does this mean for static site generation? It means that our time to first byte, our first contentful paint, our time to interactive, our SEO are all going to be great because there's really no rendering that has to happen when a request comes in. We've already rendered our pages during build time. So it has these really great performance indicators, great SEO, but it comes with that major disadvantage of having very little flexibility and rehydration on the front end is gonna be required if you want any sort of dynamic content. So static site generation, great for static content such as blog posts that don't change very often or product pages where the product page information doesn't change very often. That static content is great for static generation but remember that it's highly inflexible because we don't know who the users are when they, when they visit our page. We are building our content ahead of time. So looking at static site generation flow, we have at build time on the left-hand side, that build server is going to create, uh, that build server is going to gather markup, our CMS data, code, our API related data, and it's going to bring that all together and generate the page during build time. On the right hand side is our visitor request time. We've now put that static content on a content delivery network or CDN. And then when a user requests the data, it goes to the CDN and directly back to the user's machine. So really quick, but we don't have that dynamic field or that dynamic data because we've already pre-rendered the content at build time. Let's review these three rendering options side by side. Remember server side rendering, Rendering work is completed on the server. Personalization is possible. We know who the user is. It's great for SEO because of that minimal JavaScript execution on the user's machine. A good first contentful paint and time to interactive. These numbers are generally the same. Our time to first byte can be low if too much work has to be done by the server, leading to that blank page syndrome. Common frameworks for server side rendering are ASP.NET, Next.js, PHP, Node.js. These are all things that can run on a server. With client-side rendering, we're pushing the rendering down to the user's machine within their browser. Personalization is possible. It has a good first contentful paint and time to first byte because we send down that minimal HTML. Leads to low server costs because we're putting a lot more work on the user's machine. But not so good for SEO because of the JavaScript. Our time to interactive can be long if there's a lot that needs to be executed and the user's machine isn't very powerful. And that requirement for JavaScript is really our limiting factor with client-side rendering. It makes for great flexibility and can make some really great websites, but leads to that poor SEO and potentially poor performance. Common frameworks with client-side rendering are gonna be React, Angular, and Vue. These frameworks have made client-side rendering very popular. Last, we looked at static site generation. This is where the rendering is completed at build time, way ahead of the user's visit. This We don't even know who the user is with static site generation, so it makes personalization difficult and require rehydration on the front end. Great for SEO, time to first byte, first contentful paint, time to interactive. It's got these great performance indicators, uh, but 
that inflexibility is really the big disadvantage where you are going to create the content ahead of time, uh, but you have the inflexibility because you don't know who the users are or where they're coming from. And these can lead to big build times depending on how large your application is. So there's some uh, things to weigh in there as well with static site generation. Common frameworks with static site generation include Next.js, Gatsby, Hugo, Nuxt, and many others. So let's see where Sitecore fits into this and where some of the Sitecore offerings fit into our rendering options. For server-side rendering, we have Sitecore MVC, SXA, Sitecore Headless Services with .NET, Next, Angular, React, View. These are all capable of server-side rendering. If you're interested in client-side rendering, Sitecore Headless Services with Angular React View, these are all great for client-side rendering. And with static site generation, there's the Sitecore Headless Services with Next.js. So Next.js is capable of server-side rendering as well as static site generation. And if you combine this with the Experience Edge for XM and Content Hub with your static site generation, you're able to pull in your items during build time. This makes for a really great static site generation experience. And I don't have a lot of time with this presentation, but I do want to mention the advanced rendering options that are possible. So really what it comes down to is this idea of two pass rendering with rehydration or with hydration. And the two pass rendering is the key thing here where maybe you're doing server side rendering with client side rendering, static site generation with client side rendering, or a different combination of the two. It's this idea of we're going to do server side rendering so that we don't have to execute too much JavaScript on the user's machine, but we add in sprinkles of client side rendering to get that dynamic front end or static site generation to get the really quick time to interactive time to first byte. And then we make it dynamic with a second pass with client side rendering. So I do hope to make more content about these advanced rendering options in the future, but I just wanted to put it into your head. This idea of two pass rendering is really uh, something that's becoming more prominent where you do multiple rendering options, not just pure static site generation, server side rendering or client side rendering. And there's many other considerations to take into account when you're thinking about rendering for your application. Uh, choosing a rendering option, this is gonna be something that happens very early on in your application lifecycle. You're gonna be one of the first things you need to decide is, do I wanna do server-side rendering, client-side rendering, or static site generation, or a combination? Because this decision needs to be made so early on, there's a lot of different considerations to take in. Throughout this talk, I've mostly been talking about performance indicators and SEO but there's a lot of other things that you should consider, such as update frequency, uh, how often is your content being updated, where are your visitors coming from, are you international, are they mostly gonna be coming from one location, what are your team's development skills, do you already very skilled in a certain framework, do you already know a whole lot about client-side rendering, maybe is learning, what's the cost of learning, or what's the cost of trying to do something that your team has never done before, and really, what are the long-term goals for the application? Where do you see the goal application in one year, two year, five years? Is it even going to be round in a year? So kind of what are these long-term considerations when you're thinking about building out your application? And there's many more other considerations that you should think about, but I really wanted to bring up the performance indicators and SEO and some of the user experience that happens with these uh, rendering options. But there's a lot of other important things to take into account. So we covered quite a bit today. I really enjoyed being here. We looked at some important performance indicators, that time to first byte, the first contentful paint, largest contentful paint, and um, time to interactive. We talked a little bit about what rendering was on the web and our big main options of server side rendering, client side rendering, and static site generation, looking at the performance indicators of all three of these. We looked at how Sitecore fits in and what offerings we have at Sitecore that fit into these rendering options. We talked a bit about advanced rendering options and just kind of this idea of two pass rendering. Just wanted to put that into your head. And again, no one size fits all. Really think about the long-term considerations for your projects. Think about all the different options you have available to you because choosing a rendering option is something that happens very early on in your development life cycle and something that is going to uh, live with you for the rest of your application. Thank you for having me here today at Sitecore Symposium 2021. I encourage you to reach out with any feedback or questions. Uh, again, thank you for having me at my first Sitecore Symposium 2021.